Greetings, fellow Kerbonauts! Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Rice, I am a KSP Minimalist, and this is The Minimalist Shuttle Program, Episode 7. So a curious event has happened in the Kerbal Universe, in that some dastardly act of sabotage has destroyed the Kerbal National Space Station that we worked so hard to put up in orbit. Perhaps it could have been a malicious saboteur from the People's Republic of Micro Kerbalia. Or, <laughs> or more realistically, it could have been the upgrade that we had recently from Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2 to Kerbal Space Program 0.25. Nevertheless, uh, whether it be saboteurs or an unexpected update to the game, <laughs> unfortunately, we are without a space station. So... It's left to us once again to rebuild our space program and to get our space station back up there, rebuild it from scratch. Well, believe it or not, I'm actually looking forward to doing this all over again from, well, not quite from the beginning, but I'm looking forward to doing this again. <laughs> Why, do you ask? Well, it's all about scaling back to what I love about Kerbal Space Program, and it's fairly specific as to what I love. And what I do love are those beautiful 1.25 meter parts, which was pretty much um, the staple of the game before all these updates came in that brought in the 2.5 meter parts and the 3.75 meter parts. And so I'm one of the minimalists out there that absolutely love the smaller, more elegant, lighter parts. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rebuilding the space station using primarily 1.25 meter parts. Now, we're probably not going to be using strictly those 1 meter parts. We may slip in a few 2.5 meter parts. But what this amounts to, we will not be using the heavy shuttle, which carries those 2.5 meter parts into orbit. Oh, SRBs are spent. Let's eject those puppies there. All right, good. And let's go ahead and reorient our shuttle again and pitch our engines. Whew. Okay, good. <laughs> Moving on, almost our entire space station is going to be constructed using our light shuttle here. And in case you haven't noticed, we have a brand new light shuttle that has been added to our uh, newly reconfigured fleet of shuttles. So allow me to introduce the light shuttle Mark II, built from the B9 Aerospace parts that recently came from the B9 Aerospace upgrade recently. Composed of 28 parts and weighing in at 12 tons, she's slightly heavier and carries slightly more parts than her predecessor. However, with a cargo capacity of 4.5 tons and the ability to carry more fuel than its predecessor, she's much faster and she's more maneuverable than the Mark I series. So, how are we going to be establishing a presence in space using smaller parts? More specifically, how are we going to be building a space station using a light shuttle here? Um, and if you've played around with the B9 pack, you'll know that this cargo bay with this that I've attached to this light shuttle doesn't really have the space to carry 2.5 meter parts. Um, for example, it's not big enough to hold the big crew can that comes with the stock model of Kerbal Space Program. So with that in mind, the question is, how are we going to be building a space station that looks like a space station without ginormous, unwieldy, huge parts? Well, the answer to that comes from a really neat mod that was released recently called the Tenteris mod developed by a gentleman named Beal, and what it is, is it, it's composed of a series of parts that can be used in a space station. Now, this mod itself has 2.5 meter parts. However, what really caught my interest were the station parts that were included with the mod that were 1.25 meter in size. Now, there are a few slightly larger pieces, but these pieces also fit inside the cargo bay, which you will see in future episodes. So we just ejected our main fuel tank, and as you saw, we also threw off our main launch engines. Uh, those engines, um, as you probably saw from a prior episode, constitute a whole lot of weight, and it helps with our shuttle's maneuverability, just getting rid of uh, that extra engine, as well as that big, huge, unwieldy fuel tank. 
So, the Tantaris mod, what it really amounts to is the ability to build really neat looking stuff in space. Especially space stations with smaller parts while still making it look like a really neat space station. And so part of what we're doing here is not just uh, keeping the state of minimalism by using smaller, more elegant parts, but also making it look aesthetically pleasing. And you'll see in next couple launches in future episodes that as the station comes together with smaller parts, these 1.25 meter parts and maybe slightly larger parts, that it's going to look like an honest to goodness space station. Just a space station unlike the huge, gigantic, unwieldy beast that you often see in other Kerbal Space Program series that you've probably seen on other people's channels. Of course, that's not to say that what other people are building is any less spectacular. However, I always follow the philosophy that less is more, lighter is more, more elegant is more, and I am creating this series in an effort to prove that philosophy. <laughs> Okay, so we've, we're currently uh, circularizing our orbit here. As you can see, those large tanks along with that large launch engine, it, sole job is to get us into a suborbital trajectory. And now it is the job of those smaller engines, and we're using the RCS engines that came with the Tantaris mod that have the same 20 kilonewtons uh, of thrust as the stock model does. Uh, however, it does look a lot neater. <laughs> it looks a lot nicer too. And we're using those engines to circularize our orbit. It takes a little bit more time in order for us to do that because of how small the engine thrust is. But uh, it is usable. And we managed to put ourselves in a good enough suborbit that uh, we can rely solely on those little engines to push us into a stable orbit. What we're looking to do is we're going to see if we can push ourselves to an orbit of about 100, uh, 100 kilometers, which is pretty standard for most space stations in this game. And we're going to circularize ourselves. Oh, there we go. There's the periaps marker. And now let's scooch on over to the Apple apps here and let's see if we can bring that periaps up to the same altitude as our Apple apps. Now what's really neat is that we had pretty much a textbook launch with a, a really good, uh, really good trajectory. In that our our plane is at zero degrees when compared to the moon, so there was no uh, there was no adjusting that we had to do <laughs> with our ascending or descending mode, which is really cool because that helps saves us a little bit of fuel there. All right, so we're almost done circularizing our orbit and past 90 kilometers, perfect. There we are, oh, we just kind of overshot a little bit. So let's turn on the RCS and retro us a little bit there. Perfect, there we go. Perfect 100 kilometer circularized orbit. And now we are in the right position to set ourselves up to uh, release our cargo into space. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn our shuttle northward. And then what we're going to do next is let's go ahead and uh, time warp so that we go ahead and come around from the dark side of Kerbin over to the light side. There we go. Okay, and we are just about ready here. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that majestic sunrise. Okay, now let's go ahead and start turning over our shuttle. And as we come over the continent streaming below us, we turn our shuttle back out into space so that we get a good view of the contents inside. And let's go ahead and bring out Bill here, our resident space engineer, who's going to inspect the cargo. Okay, Bill, let's go ahead and drift out slowly here before we start opening up the cargo bay. And we need to start doing our final checks here in preparation to release our cargo. All right, everything is looking good. Just beautiful. <laughs> okay, Bill, I'm excited, are you? All right, let's go ahead and open up those doors. And there it is. All right, we've got our first module ready for launch. And ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the Unity module. 
Designed to be the very first core module for the Kerbal National Space Station, our new <laughs> and improved and leaner Kerbal National Space Station is composed of Tantares parts uh, from the Tantares part mod. And it is designed to carry both the command module, a small habitation module, as well as a small power supply. Also, as you can see from the TAC life support part, uh, it also carries some small amounts of life support systems designed to keep a, cur a single Kerbal alive for about 10 days. Also, what's really neat is notice, uh, notice me clicking uh, through the part bases here is it also acts as a storage compartment for the Kerbal attachment system. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> the Tantares mod, just about every single piece in the Tantares mod acts as a Kerbal attachment system container. So you can attach up to one 160 units worth of storage. So you don't have to use up part space to carry additional Kerbal attachment parts into space. This module here pretty much has it all. It has uh, some space for mono propellant, it has life support, it has battery support, and it has everything except for the kitchen sink, which we'll probably be launching in the next launch. And of course, to ensure proper cargo delivery, we have our resident space engineer Bill here doing the entire delivery of the cargo himself. Ever the vigilant space handyman, he watches over our first piece of our space station, making sure that uh, everything is still in one piece, making sure that there isn't any damage that was, uh, or scratches, or any cracks that were obtained during launch. And according to Bill, looks like everything looks pretty good. We got a nice, excellent, steady, and safe drift of our cargo coming out of the bay. And now it looks like it's time to officially christen our space station. Now we can officially call it the Kerbal National Space Station. Behold the space station in all its seven part 1.5 ton glory. <laughs> well, incredible, awe inspiring space stations often have humble beginnings, and this one is no different. So, uh, after final inspections are done, it is time for Bill to jet on over and to make his slow drift over to the space shuttle in preparation for our trip back home to Kerbin. Now what we plan to do is, uh, this entire series of course isn't completely based on the space station itself. There's going to be a moon shuttle and we're going to be extending our reach out into the cosmos at the very least we're going to be setting up space stations and bases on the moon and also on minmus the plane the plan still has not changed since episode one and that we plan to settle the system using our space shuttle okay let's go ahead and get some power into the station here okay perfect all right now uh, there is a little bit of temptation to leave Bill up here in orbit. However, <laughs> however, we have to maintain, we have to be safety conscious about this, and we can't leave uh, our Kerbals up in space without the necessary means for them to return back in case of an emergency. So, until we get a proper Kerbal return vehicle capsule connected up to the space station, this station is going to largely stay uninhabited, at least until we probably get some more supplies up here as well. Okay, Bill, what do you think? <laughs> All right, so Bill has given the thumbs up. Looks like the interior is good. Looks like the station is in good order. All right, now that we have finished our final inspections, now we can finally, for real reels now, <laughs> go back to our shuttle in preparation to return back to Kerbin. So for now, we say goodbye, Mr. Kerbal National Space Station. And we will return back soon with more cargo, with more pieces. Now it's time to move along at about five times speed while we set up for our landing at the Kerbal Space Center. Well, <laughs> it's about this time that I realize how long it's been since I've landed a space shuttle at the Kerbal Space Center. Usually, at least in the in the past, I've been pretty good about it. However, um, this is the first time I've landed the space shuttle back at the Kerbal Space Center, oh, in say, about a month or so. So I've been kind of out of practice. And as it's obvious here, I really, really overshot the Space Center. 
<laughs> so here I am just fighting with the torque, almost splitting N over N and almost caught in a flat spin there as uh, the shuttle uh, slows itself down in the atmosphere. And now here I am turning myself about 180 degrees and we activate our thrusters yet again and hope and hope that we still have the velocity uh, to uh, land back at the Space Center. However, it doesn't look like we're going to make it here. Yeah, it looks like our altitude is way too low and we have nowhere near the speed necessary for us to get back to the center. So now we're back to regular one-time speed here. And now it's do or die time. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower our nose down so we can gain a little bit more air speed. And as we get closer down to the ocean, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to flare up the shuttle so that we can slowly coast down into the water. This is pretty much our only hope now. <laughs> Hopefully we can uh, save as much of the shuttle as we can. So fingers crossed guys, here we go. Okay, so we're coming down, we're at three kilometers, two and a half kilometers altitude. Okay, airspeed is looking okay, and we are down to 1.5 kilometers. Here we go, here we go, ooh. All right, we're at one kilometer now. All right, we're at, whew, whew. Okay, so we're at 500 meters, we're looking good, so we're starting to lift up the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a little bit of cautious optimism here as we lower down our landing gears. Uh, not that it's going to make much of a difference anyways, but you know, you never know. Okay, here we go. We are out of monopropellant fuel and we're running out of battery power here. So our torque wheel is not going to be able to keep our nose up much longer here. Okay, here we go. Coming in. 200 meters. Okay. 150 meters, coming down very slowly. Okay, Jeb and Bill, hold on tight. Here we go. Okay, we are at 50 meters. All right, so we've got good vertical velocity there. Probably flared up a little bit too early there. Um, but here we go, and oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> but they lived, woo, okay. So Bill and Jeb are alive. Ah, okay. My goodness. Well, so much for the space shuttle. Oh boy. <laughs> and now I hereby declare this mission, mission complete. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next time.